guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka, as always, and I'm back inside, obviously, because it's freezing outside. It's negative two or something. I don't even know. Freezing my ass off when I go outside, so I just want to be inside today. And in this video, I wanted to speak to you guys about INFJs versus INTJs. And I think that, obviously, INFJs and INTJs are two of the most mistyped types, mistyped types in the MBTI, because a lot of INFJs will consider or think of themselves as INTJs, whereas no INTJ will ever think of them as an INFJ. Never. Never will an INTJ, who is a thinker, ever think of themselves as a feeler. Ever. It's never going to happen. And I'm telling you this to be, I'm telling you as sure as I am as the sun is going to come up tomorrow, because INTJs know that they're thinkers and they love the fact that they're thinkers and they don't want to be feelers. Whereas INFJs sometimes can pretend to be thinkers and we can go along with thinkers because we have a logical, rational mind and we can use it sometimes, occasionally. But we know deep down inside that we always make our decisions using emotions and feelings. That's the way we are. There's no two way about it, right? The reason I wanted to do this video is because a lot of you guys have actually expressed concern. It's really interesting that you guys care about this so much. But you express concern that, you know, you think that you are an INTJ, not an INFJ. Now, first of all, I've already said this to you guys before. If you are doubtful that you are an INFJ, and if you express that doubt several times throughout your lifetime, all the time, and you're doing the test constantly, and you're telling everyone that you're not sure if you're an INFJ or not, you are an INFJ. I have never heard of an INTJ ever expressing any sort of doubt about the fact that they're not an INTJ. Am I an INTJ? I don't know. No, they will never say that. They won't care. Once they do the test and it comes up INTJ, they're like, okay, cool, I'm an INTJ. And then they go about their day. Whereas INFJs, we are different creatures <laughs> filled with doubt and filled with confusion. I think mainly, I mean, I've done a video on this previously, but I think it's also mostly to do the, with the fact that INFJs are labeled as the rarest type and the most unique and tra-la-la, we're unicorns kind of thing, right? Tra-la-la, I don't know why I'm saying that. And because of that, we have this thing, well, I'm not allowed or I'm not worthy to be called a unicorn. I'm not worthy to be so rare. I'm not worthy to be that unique human being. How dare I tell myself that I'm an INFJ kind of thing, right? And so we don't, we, we, we doubt ourselves. We're like, no, we're not INFJs. The reason I wanted to do this video is because a lot of you are going to be on the spectrum. So as, as there is a spectrum between thinking and feeling, right? There's a huge spectrum, huge, huge spectrum with hundreds of points on it. And you know, some of you are closer to the middle where you're both feeling feelers and thinkers. And some of you are closer to the feeling side. You're very much feelers, not thinkers at all. At all. And then there, some people are closer to the thinking side. Uh, sorry, the feeling side, no, thinking side, and not feeling at all, right? So, I mean, there's a spectrum. <laughs> Sometimes I speak and I'm like, what am I talking about? Anyway, so there's a spectrum. And I believe I'm closer to the middle. That's just my belief. I don't know, I'm just making up stuff here. But I think I'm closer to the middle because I can't pretend. I, because I'm such a chameleon and because I'm very good at going along with what my sister says and she's a thinker and I know I can be, pretend to be an INTJ if I need to. And because I think that in this world, it's easier to be a thinker than a feeler, right? If someone says to you, uh, you know, what do you think about this, this, this politi political situation in the world? Or what do you think about Israel and Palestine? If you start bringing feelings into it, you're only going to take care about the feeling part of it. Basically, you're going to be like, but all those people are dying and all those children are starving. That's not what people want to hear. You know, that's not a, a logical assessment of the situation. Whereas... For an INFJ, we only care about that. We only care about harm. We don't want anyone to be harmed. We want everyone to be at peace because we don't want children to be starving on the street. We don't want people to be killed without any reason. We don't want soldiers coming in and doing stupid things, right? So, but we can't talk about this kind of stuff in that way. We have to be logical in this world. You have to be rational. You have to use the thinking side and, and, and make logical conclusions and, and rational arguments for why you think you support one side over the other, right? This is the world we live in. We live in a thinking world. We don't live in a feeling world. And that was a really, really tough thing for me as a feeler from very young, from when I was very young. I, I could not explain myself. When I was younger, I had a hard time with this, with being a thinker. I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking, but I know what I'm feeling. 
I knew what I was feeling and I knew it was really, really strong within me, but no one else wanted to hear it because all the people around me either were thinkers or they wanted me to be thinking, wanted me to be a thinker. So I was, I would, I'd be like, well, I, I feel weird in my tummy. I feel, I feel my, my stomach hurts because I'm upset or something like that. And I would say these things and I realized very fast, really, really fast that my parents would completely stamp down on that they'd be like what your stomach hurts because you're nervous no it does not you probably ate something weird or something like that don't it's not hurting because you're nervous or it doesn't hurt because you're upset okay that's not the reason and so obviously they would kind of put their thinking hat on and they'd be like you know this is why it hurts and i think myself well maybe but i really feel and as soon as i started using those feeling words they would completely go into attack mode right they'd be like no that's not the reason la 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 and obviously I realized, as all children do, very quickly, very feelingly, that I'm not going to use these feeling words with my parents that much anymore because they don't get it. They won't understand. You c- I could use it for myself and in my journaling and with people I knew were feelers, which were very few around me, but I could not use it with my parents anymore because they didn't understand it. And I understood that they didn't understand it and so I didn't use it with them anymore, right? As I grew older... I understood how to use think- thinking words and I used those. With myself, I use feeling words. But as I'm getting older now, much older, I'm going back to using feeling words and I don't care. If they don't understand it, I really don't give a rat's ass. I mean, it's not for them to understand, it's for me to understand. And if they don't understand, then I know how to make them understand. I have better communication skills now, I think, that if they don't get it in the first time around, I can, I can tweak my words so that they do get it. And if they don't get it again, then maybe they're not supposed to get it. Uh, it's not my responsibility to, to make them understand everything that's going on in my head, right? And so that's the reason I wanted to share this video with you is because if you are at all a younger INFJ or a newer INFJ and you've just discovered that you're a feeler, it's going to be a big surprise to you. And actually, a lot of you are going to hate yourself for it because it's so hard being a feeler in this crazy world of ours, right? All of the things that are happening in this world are pushing us to be more of a thinker. And we can pretend to be thinkers. It's very easy to be a thinker in this world. I mean, you can use your brain and and make logical conclusions, be rational, blah, blah, blah. But you can do it only for a little bit of time, right? Only for a little bit of time. And eventually, you're going to have to go back to your normal state of being, which is a feeling state of being. It's really important that you go back to that normal being, that normal state of yours, because that is where you exist in balance, and so, yes, pretend to be an INTJ if you're in the real world. Pretend to be an ESTJ if you want, like if that's the best thing for you. Pretend to be whatever you need to be in the world that you live in. If you need to be a thinker, if you need to pretend to be a thinker, then be a thinker. That's all right. But always come back to being a feeler with yourself and use feeling words with yourself. Because first of all, you don't want to lose that because it's very easy to lose that. Just like you can lose your intuition, you can lose your feeling state as well. You know, eventually you can become a robot, a cold automaton. It's very easy for us to do that, right? So you don't want to lose it. So that's why I would say, you know, keep on coming back to it. But also, the more you understand your feelings, the more you understand your emotions, the more you understand yourself, the easier it will be in the future for you to understand what's going on, right? The more you understand yourself, the more you understand how to deal with it. For example, If you know that every single time you get your period or every single time you menstruate, maybe that doesn't apply to men, although I think men do PMS as well. But anyways, every single time you go through that, you know that you have this mood swing. That's the feeling that you have and you know you have this feeling in your thing and in your stomach and you feel terrible and and your heart starts pumping really fast and you get anxiety, blah, blah, blah. So you start feeling all these things. So now you know that. That's a repertoire. That's a database. Just add it into your database. And then the next time around, when you feel those feelings, you're going to know why. It's not because the world is ending, although it does feel like that. It's only because you're going through PMS, right? That's a very simple example. But these are the things that we need to learn about our feelings because we can be very disconnected from our feelings. And it's very easy in this world, which tells us to live here, and not here and move away from here. A lot of things in this world are trying to move us away from our heart and into our head. We need to move back into our heart. It's really important that we live from our heart. A person who's living from their heart will not do all these crazy things that the world is doing right now. They wouldn't rip out, you know, uh, old growth forests and build golf courses on top of there or like they wouldn't do all the stupid environmental things that's that are happening right now or they wouldn't kill children or or they wouldn't go and settle in random places that are not theirs, you know, things like that. It's not going to happen if you're living from your heart. But when you start living in your head or from your head, 
this kind of stuff happens. And that's the reason that I'm really, really, really careful to always come back to my feeling side. It's so easy to stay in my thinking side for a long, long, long time. But every single time I'm on my own and on my bed sitting and journaling or thinking about thoughts or being by myself, I always ensure that I come back to my feeling side because it's really important to stay there. It's our natural state. And we need to learn to stay there and we need to learn to love it and learn what it's all about. Learn the signs and signals. It's circadian rhythms. What are the different rhythms that it goes through? Why am I feeling sad right now? Why do I feel happy then? La la. All of this information is going to teach you more about yourself, more about your feeling state. And it's really important that you guys do that because the more you learn about your feeling state, the more you can grow as a human being, right? It's very easy to think. It's very hard to feel. Again, I hope this makes sense to you guys. I, I hope that I was able to explain myself to you. Um, as you can imagine, all these videos that I do, a lot of them do require my thinking side. But when I speak, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of research, perhaps sometimes, very rarely. But when I speak, all of this stuff is coming from my heart. And I think that's the reason why it comes across as so genuine. Because it's not, I'm not using my thinking head to make up this stuff. I'm using my heart. My heart is speaking right now, right? My heart is obviously gathering information from my head. But mostly, it's from my heart that all this information is coming. That's why it's so genuine and that's so powerful, right? Again, if you guys have any questions at all, please message me anytime. All my contact information is in the description below. Or you can comment below. I love hearing from you guys. And you guys are brilliant, really smart people. And it's really important that you share your knowledge with the world because other INFJs that are going to come down the line and going to discover this in the future are going to use this information, the comments that you put down, in order to grow as a human being as well. So it's really important that you guys keep on commenting. Again, I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.